when we get to it sits down. Now, how does it does it look okay now? Look in since I moved the chair. We're good. Okay. We're all right. You want me to start telling you the story? Do you want me to ask questions or? I'll just start with the story. Okay. There's a very interesting story behind this bottle of wine. Now, why my uncles trusted Vita with this sacred object is beyond me because everybody knew she was a ditz. But on December 8th, 1942, the day after Pearl Harbor, my Uncle Fred, my Uncle Glenn, my Uncle Ted, and my Uncle Eldon went to the liquor store and bought a bottle of wine. They went into the living room of my grandfather's house and they decided that they would lay this bottle of wine down and when they all came back from the war, safe and sound, they'd open up this bottle of wine and they would get drunk. So they gave it to my Aunt Vita, who knew nothing about wine whatsoever, being a good Mormon girl. She'd never seen a bottle of wine before. Probably they hadn't either. But they bought this bottle of wine. And they left it in her keeping. Well, not knowing anything about wine, she put it in the very top cupboard of the kitchen, which is the last place you want to store a bottle of wine is where it's hot. And of course, in those days, they had coal stoves in the kitchen. And so well, the hottest place in the whole house would be would be the top of the cabinets in the kitchen. She should have stored it in the fruit room in the basement. That would have been a good place to store a bottle of wine, but she didn't know any better. And so she stuck it up in the top cupboard with the vase with the gargoyles and about five years worth of old Improvement Era magazines, which was the pre-runner of the Enzyme magazine. So she had about five years worth of magazines, a bunch of old vases and a bunch of old dishes that you didn't really want to throw out, but you didn't know what to do with, so you stuck them in the top of the cupboard. And that's where she put the bottle of wine. Well, they all went off to fight the war. Except my Uncle Fred, who got a farm deferment, so he had to stay home and work on the farm so that the soldiers would have wheat to make bread to keep them alive while they were fighting. Uncle Glenn, he saw lots of terrible service in his, uh, in his tour of duty of Australia uh, on a beach where the Japanese never came. And so his war experience was pretty bad. Uh, Uncle Glenn didn't have much of a war. Now, Uncle Eldon, on the other hand, he went to Guadalcanal, which is one of the worst battles of World War II with the Japanese. And he came back definitely with post-traumatic stress disorder and malaria. Uncle Ted had lots of brains. And so Uncle Ted went to Fort Dix, New Jersey, where he did nothing but write reports for the war. So when they got back, they probably forgot about the bottle of wine. None of them were very interested in drinking wine at that time. They uh, probably forgot about it. Eldon wouldn't have drunk it if he had it. Um, Ted, by then, was quite righteous and had moved himself to Wisconsin to get a PhD. Fred had married and was now living across the street, and Glenn shortly married. And every year, without fail, my Aunt Vita would take the bottle of wine out of the cupboard, wash it, dust it. She'd wash the vase with the gargoyles on it, all those odd bits and pieces of china and things, and she'd dust off those five years worth of Improvement Era magazines, and then she'd put them right back in the top of the cupboard. Now this went on for many, many years. Now, Vita really wasn't um, known for being all together sometimes. One time, she brought a case of Pepsi in the house and dropped it down the laundry chute. So, um, 
one year when uh, she went to get the bottle of wine, it was about the time that my brother and my cousins were about 16 or 17 years old. The bottle of wine wasn't there. And as it was our tradition on Christmas Eve every year to go to my Aunt Vita's for Christmas dinner, and she always cleaned the kitchen just before Christmas dinner, she uh, pulled out the bottle of wine and it wasn't there to dust. So when we all got there for Christmas Eve dinner, she wanted to know who had taken the bottle of wine. Now the most likely culprit was my cousin Norman, who was a bit of a rake. And if anybody would have drunk it, it would have been him. But he knew about wine, being the rake that he was. He knew better than to drink wine that had been stored in the top of a cupboard for nearly 40 years at least, because it would have been straight vinegar by that time. So he told Vita he had more sense than one little finger than to try and drink a bottle of wine that she'd stored in a cupboard at the top of the kitchen. So my brother David, my cousin David, and another cousin named Keith were all looking everywhere except at Aunt Vita. And so I had my suspicions. I knew what had happened to the bottle of wine. But everybody, knowing what a ditz Vita was, said there is no way that bottle of wine could have disappeared from the top of the cupboard. Nobody would drink it. Nobody would be that stupid. It just was dumb. It would have been vinegar. We all know that. It's up there someplace. No, it's not, says Vita. It's not up there. I swear to God, it's not up there. I've looked and I've looked and I've looked. Well, for about the next five years, we had the same conversation at the dinner table on Christmas Eve, right, we call, right before we called my Uncle Ted, who now lived in Kansas, and taught agronomy at Kansas State University. So, right before we all made the phone call to Uncle Ted, we all had to have this argument about what had happened to that bottle of wine. And everybody agreed that nobody would have drunk it, and she was crazy, and she moved it someplace. You must have moved it, Vita. Nobody would take the bottle of wine. Well, it's gone. It's gone. Well, that gave my brother Vern, who's a little sick in the head, a marvelous idea. And so the next year, he came up with this plan. And he needed me to go along with it because he wasn't old enough to go in the liquor store. So my brother Vern told me to go to a liquor store and he wanted me to buy a bottle of wine with a very old looking label. Now this was as good as I could, this was about as good as I could get for old looking labels. And uh, I not knowing anything about fine wine, bought a bottle of uh, Paul Masson, which is very cheap, not a very good wine at all, very, very cheap. You could have left it in the basement for 50 years and it still wouldn't have been a good wine. <laughs> but I didn't know anything, I just wanted, I walked in the liquor store and said, I want a bottle of wine that has a label that looks old. And so um, this is what I got. So then I took it to my mother's house, where my brother Vern was still living at the time, since he was just a teenager. And we decided that, we, what could we do to make this bottle of wine look like it had been in a cupboard for 50 years, at least. So, f the first thing he decided to do is he took it down to the barn and took it up in the loft where there were lots of cobwebs and things, and he very gently took the bottle of wine and wrapped it through about 15 layers of cobwebs so that it had plenty of cobwebs on it. And then he brought it in the house and he laid it down, and it, it, looked, it looked pretty good, but it wasn't quite right. So then he had this other idea. He went downstairs and he got the vacuum cleaner, and he got the bag off the vacuum cleaner. And then he put the bottle of wine on his turntable on his record player. And so the bottle of wine carefully turned around on 33 and a third RPMs per minute while he gently sprinkled vacuum cleaner leavings <laughs> 
all over the top of the bottle. And then one Saturday, when my mother and Aunt Vita went to Logan, as was their customary Saturday outing, after they cleaned their houses, they went to Logan and did their run their errands. Well, Vern and I waited till they left, and then we went over to Aunt Vita's house. And up in the top of the cupboard, with the vase with the gargoyles and where the real bottle of wine used to be, we put the bottle of wine that had been through the barn and all the cobwebs and had a probably a month's worth of uh, vacuum leavings sprinkled carefully on top of it. And then we patiently just waited for Christmas Eve dinner. And just as we were getting ready, we thought nobody's going to bring up the stupid bottle of wine. It had been the first time in like 20 years nobody had mentioned that bottle of wine. And I was thinking, well, I can't mention it because then when it shows up, then suspicion will fall on me. And Vern can't mention it because then suspicion will fall on him. And so we thought, well, we might have to just wait for another Christmas to come along. But finally Norman, bless Norman, who was probably drunk at the time, he um, said, I wonder whatever happened to that bottle of wine. And that got everybody at the table speculating about what happened to the bottle of wine. And Vern said, now Vita, you know very well nobody drank that bottle of wine. It's still up there in that cupboard. And she goes, no, it isn't. It's not, it's not, it's not up there. It isn't there. Now, if you don't believe me, Vern, you'd get up there and look. Now, Vern, he's seven feet tall, so he could get up on the top of the cupboard more easy than anybody else in the family. So he stood up, opened the door very carefully, moved a few magazines and a few vases with gargoyles on them, and proceeded to bring forth the bottle of wine. And Aunt Vita couldn't speak for a full five minutes as she looked at that bottle of wine. And then she started to sputter. I've cleaned that cupboard ten times since that bottle of wine went missing and that bottle of wine wasn't in there. And everybody around the table, they would go, no, Vita, it's been there all the time. Look, there it is. There's the bottle of wine. It's been there. Look, it's been there for 20 years. You can tell by the dust on it. Look, it's got cobwebs all over it. It's, it's definitely the bottle of wine. And so everybody told Vita she was crazy, she couldn't see, she better go get her eyeglasses checked because that bottle of wine had been up there for years and years. And then she just sputtered and told Vern to put it back up there. And the next year, when she cleaned the cupboard out, getting ready for Christmas dinner, she took the bottle of wine out and washed it and put it back in. And she did that for several years. And then she died. And in her will, she left me the bottle of wine. Who do you think fooled who? <laughs> and here it is, the famous bottle of wine. <laughs> uh, so are you supposed to store it so the cork is touching the wine? You're supposed to store wine like this on its side if you're going to store it at all. But unlike people who know how to store wine, Vita didn't. And it was up in the cupboard before she died for many years. And uh, I always stored it like this. So I'm sure that if it had any sediment or anything in it, which wine is supposed to have, but I don't know anything about wine either, I, it's been stirred up sufficiently now now that it would be horrible wine, you can drink it, if it hasn't turned to vinegar, which it probably has, because I didn't take any better care of it than Aunt Vita did. <laughs> and it's just been in my china cabinet for ever since she died, which has been about 20 years now. <laughs> and so since 1942, we've had this bottle of wine story in our family. And I have the second bottle of wine. Now, I don't know what I'll do with it when I die. I think I'll just leave it to burn, <laughs> since it was his idea in the first place. <laughs> Did you ever find out what happened to the real bottle? Uh, no, never. nobody ever fessed up, but I'm pretty sure that David, David, and Keith drank it and probably got very sick. 
And that's probably why they didn't want to mention that, that they had, had done it. But they were the ones who looked the most guilty the first year that it turned up missing. Thanks, Grandma. You're welcome, Taylor. <laughs>